Organised crime in Sydney began early, in the 1790s. The governors restricted the sale of alcohol, so the officers of the New South Wales Corps forced the captains of incoming ships to sell their alcohol to them, and then the officers resold it illegally to convicts at an enormous markup. This pattern of government prohibition leading to illegal markets and organised crime has been continued in Sydney for 200 years. It went away for most of the 19th century, but it came back in the 20th with a vengeance. I'm Michael Duffy. I'm a Herald journalist, and I've written this series with Bob Bottom. Bob's been Australia's leading fighter against organised crime for 50 years. When he started his work, most of us didn't even believe or know that organised crime existed in this city. We've called our series City of Sharks. One of the classic ways that Sydney gangsters have got rid of people who displease them is by putting them on a boat and taking them out through the heads and pushing them overboard, whether alive or dead. Some people call this the Sydney send-off. One of the most notorious examples happened to a law clerk named Brian Alexander in 1981. Now, Alexander was a very corrupt man and he had obtained copies of a tape of a police interview in which some couriers from the Mr Asia Syndicate had basically ratted on the Syndicate's chief, the psychopath Terry Clark. Now, Clark obtained the tapes and he had the couriers killed, but soon afterwards, the Syndicate started to collapse. And the police were very worried that Brian Alexander might tell the investigators what he knew. And therefore, Alexander himself, it said, was taken onto a boat by police taken out through the heads and given his own version of the Sydney send-off. Sydney's always been a beautiful place with its beaches, its harbour, its lovely weather, but beneath that glittering surface there have always lurked predators ready to pounce upon the weak and the vulnerable. And those predators have rarely had much trouble corrupting those in authority. Our most deeply corrupt cop was Ray Kelly, known as the Gunner. In partnership with the Mr Biggs, he ran organised crime in the city for over 20 years. He was assisted by his good friend Sir Robert Askin. At Kelly's retirement dinner in 1966, Askin described him as a close personal friend to whom no fictional detective could hold a candle. He was right about that. Kelly was described by someone else as an extraordinary combination of evil and genius. A brilliant detective, but he always reminded me of a snake, a python. These are just two of the men who made Sydney a city of sharks. 